Good morning. We're just thankful to God for conditions being as well as they are. Uh, in realizing, we said in the Lord's Academy, that man loves his religion, uh, Brother Davis, because he thinks that he can uh, handcuff God yeah. and command God and make life to be like he wants it to be. Uh, and that's the reason they love, uh, several reasons they love the tithing system. One thing it is, is to make sure that you give a certain amount of money because you know most of you stingy anyway. And then if he, make, if he tell you that you're going to be cursed if you don't give, you'll probably be more likely to give. But you're not giving from your heart. And if you knew the scriptures and you understood them, you wouldn't go for that anyway. Because the Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver. And so if you're giving out of fear, you're not giving cheerfully. You're giving out of fear. And also you're giving thinking that you, if you give, you're going to make God do something which automat automatically puts you out of place because I don't think you're big enough to make God do anything anyway. Uh, I, I just don't, I don't think our little pea brains come up to the point of being able to figure out God. And um, God is just mother none, going to be God all by himself. And, and we can't say that if I do this, then God's going to do that. Certainly, uh, our hearts are heavy this morning for... Um, our sister and, and sisters and uh, uh, sister Kathy Jacobs and uh, yes, yes. Tammy uh, in the loss of the brother and child uh, tears my heart out. Yes. If you love somebody, when they're hurting, you hurt. Yes. And so certainly uh, I ask you to keep them in your prayers. And not only them, Terrence, but all of us are fighting. Yes. All of us are fighting. I had a young man to call me this morning, and uh, Deacon Weatherby, he called me, and he talked, and he said, I just need to hear your voice. Yes. And he says that I feel so far away from God. Yes, Lord. Uh, he said, I'm just struggling. And he said, I call my children, and my children tell me, he said, you, you call too much. Yes. Amen. And so then, uh, truth of the matter is, is that every one of us, we look real good and we look like we're doing fine, but each and every one of us are struggling and yeah. we're, we're fighting. We're, we're, we're fighting just to hold our head up. And as he talked to me, he had to get off the phone because he started crying. And he said, it was a man. He said, I keep thinking about it. It was a man that told me one time, said, you somebody. Yeah. And then what made him break down, he said, you are that man. I don't even remember telling him that. Yeah, yeah. But you know, if we just had somebody yeah. that would just look past our faults. See, that's why we love the Lord. Yeah. Because you see, God looked past our faults. Yeah. But it looked like even the folks that we take care of, look like the folks that we love, they, all they can see is the worst of us. All they ever have is just to pull us down and yeah. things that we do to try to make folk proud of us and whatever, look like they don't find nothing about it. Come on, Pastor. I come this morning, God gave me a word. I, I get it before I even do the scripture. I'm sorry if that offends you. Just look at your neighbor. Look him right there now and just tell him, say, this world, this world is not my home. This world is not my home. You see, Sister Sherry, the Lord told me, he said, you know, he said, you need to go back to the old time where the, where the, where the old saints used to say, baby, say, say this, whole, this world, I'm just a pilgrim and I'm trying They said, look, you say, uh-uh, hold on. <laughs> Sometimes, sometimes we can weather be life gets so good over here. We wearing clothes we never wore. We driving cars that we only saw other folks driving. We we got nice palatial homes, Terrence, and you know not we got a, not only do we have enough for the day, but we got enough for tomorrow too. Little money upside, but every now and then God has to send something through to remind me that this world is not my home. I'm not in my home. You know, sometimes, you know, maybe you have somebody come visit or something. Yeah. And everything. Now, you just visiting. You ain't, this is not your home. This ain't where you stay. 
and you start doing, you see them start doing crazy stuff like they, they put their children in school and what, what you putting your children in school here? This ain't your home. This, and we do that about this world. We start looking at what we got and we start looking at what we think gonna happen and God have to show us that, baby, you got a heavenly home. This ain't nothing but tears over here on this side. But I got a home. I heard the old folks sing a song one day, Sister, uh, Sister Dorothy. They said, some glad morning. Some glad. Look at him. Sometimes it gets so good over here. But David said, if it had been my brother, I mean, if it had been my enemy, I could have stood it. But it was my brother. Then he said, he said, if I just had wings of a dove. Maybe you've never been there. I'm talking about when your heart been pierced. When depression comes on you and you can't hardly see your way. You got money in the bank. You got fine clothes to put on, but look like you can't see your way. But God told me this morning, Freddie told me, he said, don't worry about it. He said, this, this world is not your home. I was getting ready to say, let me see. Let me, get, let me where I want to go. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. I thank the Lord I don't have to study for a message because I study the Bible. And so then when God said where to go, that's where we'll go. 1 Corinthians 15. You got to worry about it. Sometimes it seems like you'll never raise your head again. But do I have a witness that say that he'll raise your head? He'll raise your head. And Sister, Sister Valerie Lay said, every now and then, I'd like to tell the enemy, I've been here before. You see, that's the reason that Paul told Timothy that don't let a novice be a bishop. Don't let a novice try to lead folk because you see, there's going to come some trials and some tribulations simply to show you that this ain't none of your home. But it don't come to destroy you because every time David said, I've been young and now I'm old. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken, not his seed begging bread. I've seen times when it looked like we wasn't going to make it. I've seen times that looked like everything I was depending on had let me go. But God came in. No wonder David said he's a lifter of my head. Anybody know he's a rock? He's a rock. Not me and not who I think that's going to be here for me, but he is a solid rock. I said 1 Corinthians 15, right? <sighs> Look what Paul says here in verse 10. He said, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. People try to put you down and folks try to go back in your past and, and, and try to. I was in discussion with some people and simply because of the stand that I take, Paul says, I believe, therefore I have I spoken. And Keontae, if you ain't got enough backbone to speak what you believe, I feel sorry for you. But now you have to give room for other folks to disagree. Because now uh, it ain't none of us that ain't been wrong and thought we was right. Amen. And so I'm just giving what I believe. And I believe that no matter how much sin it is, that grace did much more abound. I think that the only thing that's going to save any of us is grace. Amen. And I got Bible on it because the Bible says you're saved. By grace. Now, I'm not a theologian. I've never been to school. I don't have the doctorate degrees. I know everybody got a doctor in divinity now. I don't have one. I don't have one. But I did read where it says that you are saved by grace. Now, that doesn't seem to me to be real complex. It just says by grace. Then it goes further to say through faith. So, in other words, I made a way for you. I marched up Calvary's cross. I, I, I gave my hands. I gave my feet. I didn't come down. I stayed there until I had shed my blood on your behalf because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So I died and I bled in order to, to take care of your sin. And so I just believe that the blood that he shed was efficacious and I, I believe that the Father accepted the blood that he gave him in exchange for my sins. I, I just believe that. Brother Jeff, I don't mean nobody no harm. And so when you come try to put sin on me, I, I don't accept it. I, the gift was here, but now a gift is nothing if you don't receive it. How do I receive something from God? 
Do I give enough money? Do I come to church enough? Do I wear the right clothes? Do I hold my head the right way? The Bible says you're saved by grace, but it's through faith. And so then I can't get nothing from God unless I believe God. And, and, and you see that I have to let God be true and every other man be alive because this religious system keeps telling us what we have to do. You got to do this. And they go so far, Brother Davis, to even look down on you with the clothes that you got on. Oh, she knows she shouldn't have wore that here. Or whatever. But it, it don't say by grace through the clothes you wear. It don't say by grace by the way you act. But it says by grace through faith. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that it don't take money. Because if it took money, the rich man would go in and the poor man would. I'm, I'm so glad that you don't have to be from a certain family. Do you, do you know that they, they raise up certain folks? because of the family that they come from but, I, but I'm so glad that it's through faith I got about two or three folks here and said, said pastor the way I got it was because I believe God I just had to believe God everything that was looking at me was telling me I wasn't nothing wasn't going to never be nothing wasn't no way to be made but the day that I believed God God began to open up doors I read Lady Deborah where somebody said that until God opened a door God praise him in the hallway. <laughs> you ain't went through yet, but, but praise him right where you are. I didn't come to church this morning and look around to see who was here. Baby, I'm glad to be here. <laughs> I, whatever reason you got for not being here, it ain't none of my business. Uh, but I want you to know that God touched me this morning with a thing. I didn't wake myself up, uh, but God got me up. Uh, and not only did he get me up, he touched me and gave me the right mind. Uh, God said, go on on out. <laughs> now forget about what you've been through going through all week. Forget about what they said about you. Come on in. I got a word for you. This world is not my home. That's the reason I don't get you whether it was Barack Obama or Donald Trump. This world ain't my home. I'm going to eat. I'm going to sleep. I'm going to be all right. If they can let Trump mama come in and be queen if they want to, they can change the name from president to queen or king. But I want you to know that my God sits high and he looks low. This world is not my home. Uh, don't try to tie my hand to what's going on in this world and what you got to say. And, and I just believe that God saved us through his blood. I, I just believe that. I don't, I don't believe that sin is a problem. I, I don't believe. I believe God took care of sin. Now all I got to do is use my faith. As a matter of fact, three times, I know at least two times, I know in Romans, got three times, in Galatians and in Habakkuk, God says, uh, the just shall live by faith. You see, I know how a man is made righteous, not by how he act, not by what he do, because folk can act any kind of way. You ever had any folk that act one way and then you found out they really wasn't like that? So it ain't how you act, but it's what you believe. I'm getting to heaven by what I believe, not by what I do. But that's why the devil have you to just focus on what folk do. But this world is not my home. I'm not looking at y'all. I'm looking at Jesus. The author and the finish. Do you know when you get to putting your eyes on folks, you'll get discouraged? When you get to, I'm talking about in church or out of church. You get to looking at folks and you get discouraged. But Deacon Brimley, if you can keep your eyes on the Lord. Oh, yes. He's a mighty good leader and guy. And I tell you what, they went to talking about me like I wasn't even there. The guy said, well, Rev, you're wrong about that. I said, well, I give, you that, I, I give you the right to disagree. Yeah. I thought that would be the end of it. Right. That wasn't the end of it right there. Amen. Other folk got in the conversation <laughs> and everything. They said, well, you know he thinks he's this and that because he's educated. On, but I want you to know something. My mama, Edda Bland, walked around with holes in her slip in order for me to get my education. And if you think I'm going to hold my head down because I got a, a, a law degree and because of that the devil ain't nothing but a lie. I begged them folk to let me in to get mad because I wasn't worthy. I had 53 hours of F. And I asked them folk, just please give me a chance. And now you think I'm going to hold my head down because you jealous or mad or whatever. Baby, I'm going to say like Paul, by the grace of God, I am what I am. I only got Brother Moss a few years that's here. I'm not going to spend these years worrying about what jealous Negroes think about what God has done for me. You're mad about the lectures. What you going to do when the helicopter Say it, Pastor. You better say it. You better say it. Thank you. Thank you. 
Our people are deficient when it comes to uplift. You must understand that our people have a slavery mentality. They have a crabs in a bucket mentality and do not know how to lift folk up. And that's how come you have to do like Gideon. See, Gideon, Gideon was scared of the Philistine, so he took what God had blessed him with and hid it. But the devil is a lie. I'm going to wear mine, I'm going to ride in mine, and if the devil is mad, God bless him, you ain't seen nothing yet. This world is not my home. I got a home on high, my brother. I got a blessed hope. When I die, Paul, Paul says, uh, to be absent is to be present. It's better for me if I was to go on and be with the Lord. Because this foolishness that stopped the madness, this foolishness that's going on down here, I ain't going to have to worry about it. I ain't going to have to worry about it when I walk by my church members and whatever, who she thinks she is. All right. Do you know I can have more help here in the church? Yeah. But I got folks that scared to help me, Deacon Weather, because they're scared of what folk going to say. Well, I don't want to get up because they'll say every time you look up, they up or whatever. But I'm going to tell you what, you got to get your mind off of these folk. They ain't doing nothing. They're going to never do nothing. I need your help. I can't do everything by myself. Pick up a piece of paper just off a chair. Everything you don't help me do, that mean me and Deborah got to do it. Don't ride a horse until he fall down. We 12 years into the game. Almost 13 years. Don't you know everybody get discouraged? Everybody get tired. But you know what? You ought to tell the devil he's a lie. This house and, and this world is not my house. I'm going to put my hand to the plow. I'm going to do what I can. Thank you, Lord. You got to get out of yourself. And wear this world like a loose garment, baby. Because you ain't going to be able to stay here. Yeah. I don't care what you, and the things that's going to happen, you got to understand that this is not it. It gets so good sometimes that you just want to, oh my God, this, but this is not it right here. God got better for you. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Paul says, by the grace of God, I am what I am. Look what he says, and his grace which was bestowed on me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. And you know, when people think here that you believe in grace and they believe that, that God does everything, they mean, they, they take that because they corner man. And they take that to mean, oh, well, you're going to do whatever you want to do. Baby, with the grace of God in me. <laughs> Grace will work you to righteousness. Grace ain't going to take you to sin. Grace, grace is going to take you to true righteousness. Where it's not you, but it's God that worketh within you to will and to do his good pleasure. Have you found yourself doing stuff that you know you normally wouldn't do? Said, so, well, you know he he's he's well educated, and so and then the other lady said, well, I don't even want to go into mine because I have a master's in theology and a doctor's in divinity, and I'm an apostle called by Yahweh. <laughs> you know what I said? I said nothing. I said nothing because I was through with it when I said I give you the right to disagree. You see, God told me, he said, I'll give you peace. I'll give you peace. I told y'all the greatest deliverance I ever got was deliverance from Negroes. I, I ain't been, when I leave here today, I ain't going to let you, what y'all do and nobody else do worry me because God gave me peace. When I sit down to eat, I'm going to enjoy everything I eat. When I get in my car, I'm going to turn around and say, boy, this is a bad car right here. When I go home and look at my wife, I'm going to say, that's a bad mama jamma right there. I'm telling you, that, that stop the madness. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Stop this madness. Yes, Lord. All we ever wanted was a better quality of life. How long am I going to have to suffer for you to be alright? You don't know where I came from. You don't know folks' story. You see the glory. Hey, I talk to a man and I know half the folks in town jealous of that man and I talk to that man that man began to tell me about when he was in college his mama called him and asked him for $50 he was in college he didn't have no money but he said he had a, a little raggedy stereo he took the stereo to the pawn shop and got $50 and sent that home to his mama and I looked at him I told him I said you a good man I want you to know but half the folks in town because of how God done blessed him they look at him and want to pull him down but I 
come here today to tell you, don't you let nobody else pull you down. Enjoy what God has given you. This world is not my home. Folks is mad about pants and shirts and shoes and whatever. All of this, we're going to leave it when we leave here. But it's for you to enjoy while you're here. I don't care if you ain't going nowhere but Walmart. Go in there and get as sharp as you can get. And walk up in there and watch the haters get. You better say it, Pastor. You better say it. You better say it. And see, Brother Davis, you can watch them slick haters. You watch them slick haters. <laughs> because they, you know, they said something like this right here. <laughs> big money, big money. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> big money. They don't know but slick hate. <laughs> but you know what? <laughs> All you do is just speak to them and keep on going. <laughs> because I want you to know something. The Bible says he shall work and who shall hinder it? <laughs> the one that's blessing you, Brother Jeff. <laughs> the one that got your back. <laughs> Ain't nobody strong enough to hold him back. <laughs> he is the king of glory. <laughs> Open up, he can and let him in. It's about two or three of us that know that we wasn't even able to keep God from blessing us. <laughs> because we act such a monkey. We act such a fool. <laughs> because you see, Brother Orlando, everybody want to be accepted. Everybody want to be appreciated. <laughs> and do you remember the time in your life huh, where you did things you really shouldn't have done huh, in order to make other folks get along with you and to like you? Huh? And when you got through, they still didn't like you. <laughs> but stop the madness. <laughs> I hope you done grown up. <laughs> I hope you have matured enough uh, to realize it's God that's blessing you. Uh, they ain't did nothing for you and if they could they wouldn't. Amen. If they could they wouldn't do it. They don't want to see you married. They don't want to see your children do nothing. Every time you walk by, it just hurt them. They get heartburned. But that ain't your problem. But your, problem, your thing is, Sister Linda, you have to do, like, like the Bible says, if you hold your peace. Don't get in no argument about them. See, see the devil, the Bible, Paul says, avoid foolish questions. And see, the devil wants you, my brother, to get sit up and try to explain to him. You see, but you know what? The Bible says you have no need. You don't have any need to fight in this battle. For the battle is not yours, but it's the Lord's. They used to sing a song from the church I came from. They said, I'm on the Lord's side now. And it makes me mighty happy. I'm on the right side. I got, my, I got my hand in the right hand, Brother Dave. You hear me? And it get rough sometimes that people say stuff that hurt you so bad. But I told y'all a long time ago, Sister Deborah Craig, one thing don't never ask, and that's why. Because when you ask why, you're stuck. Because you sitting there trying to figure out why. But you know what? The old people used to say, you are understanding better. By and by. The farther you get down the road, don't you stop. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There was a poem that I had to learn at one time. We called Mother the Son. Mother the Son. And I want you to know something. If you done had a real mother, you had some help. <laughs> Because it was mother, it was mother, it was mother in them times when I was got to looking out and I got to looking around that mother brought me back in. And mother told me, said, baby, you done made it with a lot less than what you got now. I done prayed for you. You see, what we have to keep in mind is, is that you've gone so much further, not because you so much better. But you got so much further because you stepped up on the prayers of other folk. <laughs> that was folk that prayed for you. <laughs> oh yeah, that was that was folk that was praying for you <laughs> that you didn't even know about. <laughs> and and so you have to understand that you shall you will be all right. Yeah. But you you know what? You have to wear this world like a loose garment. <laughs> what they got to say about you and how they talking about you and how you ain't nothing and all that. You just keep on walking. And we keep on walking. Walk on down the road you'll be able to help some of them. Because you think you sit up there. Don't get to asking why. Come on. I ain't never had no bad thoughts about them. I ain't never did. Or whatever. Don't worry about it. Amen. See the Bible talks about filling up the sufferings of Christ. You don't have to get up on the cross but you have to fill up the sufferings. And when you are Christ, just like they persecuted him when he was here, they persecuting him now. 
But see, it's not you, but it's who you represent. <laughs> because you see, it makes the devil mad. Whenever you tell the devil, say, that ain't nothing we can do in order to be made right. All right. I, I, when I seek to do good, evil is present with me. I still ain't 100% right no matter what I do. A lot I don't do now, but I ain't 100% right. Huh? So my righteousness is not my own, but I'm trusting in the blood that Jesus shed on Calvary's cross. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians. I'm having a good time already. This world ain't my home. Uh -uh. Look what he says. But I labored more abundantly than thou, but the grace of God which was with me. You see, grace is what helps me to stay with my wife. Amen. Grace is what helped me to love my children. Because you know your children don't act like you think they will. Amen. I got two. Ain't there one of them at church today? Y'all think that don't hurt me? Yes, Pastor. Think that don't hurt me? Yes. Here I am pre preaching, doing all I can, trying to stand up and everything. Yes. But you know, I know it ain't none of you. That's right. It's what's got you. When the right thing, y'all don't like me, do you? I'm, I can't do nothing but I can't do nothing but tell the truth. If I, if I ain't gonna tell the truth, but I take this microphone and throw it as far as I can. I ain't got to do this right here. But ain't nothing but the truth go help you. Yes. I ain't the only somebody. Everybody else in there hurt by something. Yes. Yes, Lord. But you got to push past your pain. Yes. I can't just stay at home talking about I ain't gonna preach. I can't stay at home. But God got some folk that waiting for a word. God got somebody that waiting for you. But the pain is supposed to paralyze you where you don't make it to your assignment. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Show try. Satan trying to keep you from your assignment. Each and every person in here, God have assigned you to do something. Yes, Lord. But 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 the pain tries to keep you away. And the self-doubt. But if you wasn't good enough to be doing what you doing, you'd have never got where you got. And so the grace of God begins to, do I have a witness that God taught you how to raise your children? That God taught you how to manage your money? You didn't have the money that other folks had, but your money went further than other folks' money went because it was the grace of God. That was work I'm preaching right now. The grace of God. Oh, they don't like it when you don't want to take no credit. <laughs> but I don't need no credit. <laughs> I need Jesus. <laughs> when you realize that he's the fast of 10,000, <laughs> David, uh, Solomon said that he looked through the, through the lattice of his window. <laughs> he couldn't sleep. <laughs> I want you to know, I said, God, let this thing get over me. <laughs> Where it'll make me get up out of my bed at night. <laughs> get down on my knees. <laughs> Not asking you for nothing, <laughs> but crying out. <laughs> telling you how good that you are. <laughs> when you get a glimpse of who he is and what he's done. When God, Brother Keontae, give you a glimpse of who he is and how he's brought you through dangers and how God made a way when they tried to stand up there and block you and the things that they said that used to cut you to your heart don't hurt no more and you can say baby my life is not in your hand this world is not my home I've got a judge that sits up on high ain't that what Job had to tell his friends he said, I, 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 I know my Redeemer liveth, and I shall see him in that last day. I know God ain't forsaken me. No matter what happens, it's some hard things that happen. It's some hard things that happen. And you got to still trust God. You don't understand it. You got to understand this world is not my home. God got better for me if I hold on. Yes. Look, look what he says here. He says, Thank you. therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so you believe. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead. Mm -hmm. Now, ain't nobody, got, ain't nobody rose from the grave and didn't die Amen. but Christ. Amen. He was the first fruits of them that slept. Yes. So he whooped death. Oh, he whooped death. You see, because every man lived in fear of death. Yes, I notice this right here, Brother Orlando. They don't even like me to talk about it. Yes. But I don't fear death. Amen. What I fear is being out of the presence of God. I, I don't fear death. Yes. 
Because the Bible says uh, it's appointed yes, upon man to once to die. Yes. And then the judgment. So, yes. so I, I don't fear death. What I fear is being without God. This world is not my home. And so Paul explains to the Corinthians that Christ rose from the grave. You see, that's something that each and every one of us feel. Oh, Lord, if that ever happened. But for many of us, it happened and God still brought you through. It happened. It happened. And see, Sister Demetrius, what most folks fear is being alone. Yes. And that's why most folks do everything they can to keep from being bored. Yes. You buying movies, you're going to the movies. You, you see, our people is poor because of entertainment. Yes. Other folks reading books, other folks is, is cultivating their mind, and you standing trying to go to concerts, you trying to do this. You, you going in, you're paying money to folks already got money. You ain't got nothing. Yes. But it's entertainment because you have fear of being bored and fear of being alone. Yeah. And that's the reason Blink and Weatherby, at times, God have to let atrocious stuff to happen yeah. in order that he can be shut up with him. Yeah. 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 Oh, we didn't want to be there. We did not want to be in that place, Brother Moss. We did not want that to happen where it wasn't nobody but us and God. That's the reason that many of us have had rental friends and lease of friends. Yeah. I'm preaching this morning. I don't care. I come here to preach. I didn't come here for nothing else. So what many of us have had rental friends and lease of friends. But somebody that mean it, look at your neighbor and tell them, I ain't buying no more. I ain't buying no more. Oh, you can go on. You can go. You can go. I ain't giving up now. <laughs> like my daddy said by a certain person, my mama, we mess with him when he used to be talking and stuff. And she said, I'm going to get such and such some money. And my daddy, we thought he couldn't talk. He looked up and said, don't give him a quarter. <laughs> I'm not spending now another quarter trying to buy and to keep Negroes around me. I'm letting the hostages go free. I'll be all right. I, me and my money, we'll be all right. You talking about being lonely, mess around and don't have none of them dead presidents. You gonna find out what loneliness really is about. Folks that you thought cared about you, you can't even, they ain't even asking your phone no more. If you got some of them dead presidents, honey, you got some friends. Y'all <laughs> don't like the truth. The Bible said money is the answer of all things. Mm -hmm. And y'all say sometimes that money won't buy happiness, but it sure make me happy. I don't know. I don't know what kind of happiness you looking for. I don't know what kind of happiness you're looking for, but I, if I got some money, I'm mighty happy. I'll go to skipping. Thank you, Jesus. Look like the sun come up a little brighter. Thank you, Lord. Look what he says. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how said some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then it's Christ not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. You see, this is the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection. This is the good news. Not uh, don't be no homosexual. Not don't go to the casino. Not give a certain amount of money. That's not the gospel. That's, that's foolishness. Stop the madness. The gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection. The gospel is, is that God said it don't get bad enough. It don't get stinking enough. You don't get so bad that he can't resurrect you. And even death, he... He conquered death and the grave. Death boasted about who he was. I got Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Ezekiel, uh, the one that you love so much, Isaiah, and all them. Uh, I'm holding them right here. They had their faith in you, but you know what? Uh, he, while he was talking to them, that, that when Jesus, uh, when they put him in Joseph of Arimathea's borrowed tomb, uh, Peter says that he went down into hell and preached to them that had been captive against their will. And then the Bible says that he led captivity to the and gave gifts unto men. What are you saying, Pastor? What I'm saying is, is that they stayed there and they had to listen to the devil gloat about, okay, when you was on earth, God was taking care of you. When you was on earth and all this right here, and they had to listen to that sermon 
every day. Huh? But then what, you know what? Huh? That Friday evening, huh? the Bible tells me huh? that they said, we got a guest minister in town. Huh? Who is it? Huh? He looks like the lion of the tribe of Judah. He got eyes like coal and hair like burnished wool. Huh? He went up and he took the podium and everything. Isaiah and Ezekiel Ezekiel said, we got to hear this same old sermon. We've been hearing every day and they had their head down. But all of a sudden, it was a different voice. And they looked up and said, it sounds like my Savior. And he told them, said, boys, he said, pack your stuff up. This world is not our home. I'm getting ready to take you where you've never been before. I'm getting ready to take paradise. Yes, taking you up to the third heaven. This world is not my home. Oh yeah, I did. it don't exempt me because I'm pastor. It don't exempt me, I'm catching hell and high water. <laughs> folks looking all upside your head, you can't make folks, you can't make nobody be happy with you. You still, you ain't nothing, ain't gonna never be nothing. <laughs> but I got my solace and I got my comfort out of God. <laughs> I said, you know what God, <laughs> you'll never let it get so bad, I won't be able to take it. <laughs> because the Bible says that there's no temptation taking you. Yeah. But such is common to man. But God will with it. <laughs> Do you know anything about heartache? Do you know anything about being pierced in your heart? <laughs> Do you, you know? Do you also know how about if God come in and taken care of you? <laughs> Have God lifted up your head? <laughs> Have God made a way out of no way? <laughs> and then they think you getting ready to come to church, <laughs> suck on your teeth, <laughs> and look, you can talk about me all you want to. <laughs> oh, she knows she ought to be quiet. It don't take all that. <laughs> but baby, you don't know from where he brought me from. <laughs> you don't. Let me tell you something. Not sandwich. I'm for me like. I still get happy about a sandwich. I, I promise you I do. I still get happy about a sandwich. And don't mess around and get me one of them. I, I don't want no stoveball glass. Give me one of them mason jars and fill it up to the top with some of that red Kool-Aid. And put sugar in it. I want the sugar so thick that you can see it right there. And let me sit down and watch some of them old westerns. You think I ain't happy? I know where God brought me from. All the days of my life, God been good to me. This ain't none of my home. You can't make me feel bad. Pull me down. Baby, you don't know from where I came from. From where I came from, I'm rich. What I got now, I know it don't look like nothing to you. But from where I came from... Well, I'm getting ready to go home and enjoy the day. I couldn't even see this years ago. But look at what God has done. God has done exceeding abundantly above all that we ask, I think. Stop the madness. I ain't got to do what I'm going to do like with a bottle rush. I ain't studying you. I can't make you happy. No matter what I do, I can't make you happy. I ain't got the right woman. I ain't got this right. You know what, Deborah? I, I had a Negro had up there to me. He said, look like y'all don't go together. I said, it sure been going together a long time for me. Praise the Lord. Look what he says. But if there is no, I'm verse 13. If there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then I, I preach in vain and your faith is also vain. Yes, Lord. You see, I'm saved by grace through faith. Yes, My faith is what brought me in. Right. And it's so foul. Mm -hmm. Because you know, sometimes they have certain stuff you're supposed to wear to church. Amen. And I ain't got no black pants and white shirt. <laughs> So I thank God I got faith. If most of the mother brown, if I can just believe God. Because it get hard sometimes. Some of the folks that you thought would be helping you when you get down, they'll be the very one that put their mouth on you. Because they never was with you, but they were scared because you was winning. As long as you was winning, they were scared to say anything. But when they think, see, God will play possum on them, though. They'll make their move too soon. They'll think you're dead. And before you know it, God will raise you up. Because all he would do, I would just show you who was around you. So you don't know who around you until things get tough. You don't know. You don't know some of your very neighbors. Folks are living next door. Grinning in 
your face because you winning. But the moment something happened, they go to laughing and talking because they were just waiting. But you see what I'm saying? But you don't have to worry about it because you got the Lord on your side. And if God, boy, I'm telling you what, if I was Baptist, I'd have tuned up right then. If God, oh, thank you, Jay. If God be I don't know why I got to walk way back here, but the Lord told me to come shake your hand, Sister Linda. He told me to look you eyes in, in the eye and tell you, say, if the God be. I didn't say pastor. I didn't say Manasseh. But I say, if God be for us, who can be a. They've been trying to cut your legs off, I don't know how long, and you're still walking. You mess around, go to skipping. Somebody said, when I think about the goodness of the Lord and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, thank God for saving me. Preacher, they always going to show you where you ain't worthy of what God doing for you. But I'm glad I found out about grace. I'm glad I found out that not none that's worth. I'm glad I found out that you don't buy nothing from God. You don't earn nothing from God. But you come to God humbly in faith. And he's your father. He just throw gifts on you. Bro, Dave, they don't know where you came from. They don't know how hard you work. When other folks done gone home with their family, you still out trying to make it. Then they want to get jealous about what you're riding in and what you got and what you're able to provide. Thank you, Jesus. But this world is not my home. And long as I'm here, I'm going to work my heart out to try to take care of my wife, take care of my family. And then when my days is over, I'm going on home and be with the Lord. I'm going on home and rejoice. Stop the madness. Clap your hands for the Lord.